Welcome everybody to game number four of four today for the Global Basketball Summer League in Las Vegas from the Doolittle Community Center. I am Matt Fowler, alongside me is Nick Anastas and we have a great game between the Canada Stars and Point Streak. Nick, what can you expect? Well, we're gonna expect a hard fought game for starters. Both teams, deep benches, long athletic players and motivation, right? As you mentioned, a trip to the championship game is on the line. I don't think there's much else to say. So I think it's gonna be important which team makes the least amount of mistakes, capitalizes at the free throw line, and really works on the glass because there's not much of a size advantage either way. We're just about ready to get underway here. And as we mentioned, they will take on Greek Connect, who won earlier. Whoever is the victor in this game. And the GBSL is all about individual talent, but at the same time, the coaches and scouts are going to look at the tapes of the games that won and the teams that won. And so that is a huge motivating factor. Right, and just as a competitor. You know, you, you want to go out there and you, you want to leave Las Vegas saying you're the champion. Which very few people can do, actually. <laughs> right, right. You, a lot of losers leave Las Vegas, for sure. So just waiting on the waiting on the officials and the announcements for the starting lineups. And... Nick, what has been your overall experience here at the Global Basketball Summer League? Well, it's, first of all, it's fun, number one. You're out here in Las Vegas, one of the most entertaining cities in the country for sure. Number two, the level of ball has been as good as advertised, no doubt about it. You're seeing players from all over the map, literally, not just in America. You're seeing a lot of athletes that have gifts in terms of athleticism. And surprisingly enough, I, I think they've played some pretty good team ball given the fact that they've come to Las Vegas as strangers and have kind of thrown into the fire in terms of playing with one another. We've seen a couple of setbacks, I guess, that you could attribute to that. But overall, these guys have, have done a nice job adapting to one another and, and playing a good team game. And, you know, there's a reason why this, this tournament or this Global Basketball Summer League really gains prestige every year. It grows a little bit bigger. It gets a little bit more notoriety. And, and that's because the players come here hard. It's well organized by Daryl Reshaw and his staff. And, and I've been pleased to be a part of it. And let's take a look at some players to watch here. First for the Canada Stars. Take a look at Oliver Ellison out of Morocco. Averages a double-double, 15 points a game, 12 rebounds. And they're going to need that production if they hope to advance to the championship in uh, Canada Stars. Yeah, no doubt about it. And he's a big boy, isn't he? 6'10", 223, long arms. You can see why over a dozen rebounds per game out in the Moroccan League. And yeah, he's going to be one to watch for sure. It looks like he's about set to jump center. And uh, for the point streak side of things, Wally Hepburn from the New York Bullets, 20 points, five rebounds a game, 6'5", 212. So take a look at Wally Hepburn for point streak on their side of things. We're just getting ready to jump it up here. And the tip is controlled by Adonis Filler. And point streak, and right away you have a tripping foul on the Canada Stars. So I expect the filling out process here just for the first few minutes, just kind of see where each team's at before the game gets kind of running and gunning, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think both teams will keep the defenses basic at least for the first quarter. Shot is good for 
And Don is filler, as we mentioned, 6'4", 200 out of Florida Atlantic. 10.9 points a game. Scores the first bucket. Pretty jump shot high off the floor, too, on the release. In response, that jump shot won't go. An over-the-back foul, and it will go back to, you know, now they say it'll stay on this end of the floor. And a little push there on Oliver Ellison. We highlighted him in the pregame. Or no, excuse me, it was on the defender. You're right, Kevin Glass out of East Tennessee State with his first. Inbound pass. And the teams like Canada is content to fill it out here, although a nice acrobatic layup for Aaron Armstead. Yeah, kind of a windmill finish there for the Northern Illinois product. Great first step to get in the lane, too. That three in response by Filler won't go, and back come Canada. 15 to shoot, just over a minute gone by, tied at two. Three-pointer is good for Armstead again. So he's making an impact early with five quick points. Yeah, he's got the stroke. Take it inside in, out, spot up or off the dribble. He's a good player on offense. Eight to shoot. Three-pointer is good for Demetrius Floyd. Demetrius Floyd out of Stephen F. Austin University. And a scoring park guard, just under 14 a game last season and showing the range there on a quick pull up. Five, five, two gone by. Defender fell down, pass out of bounds. We'll go back to point streak. Now both teams running some high sets here, a lot of high pick and rolls as they try and space out the floor. You mentioned a feeling out process early on. I think that's a, a good way to describe the first two minutes here as both teams kind of cautiously executing their sets. There's another three. And Demetrius Floyd again. He's got so the hot hand early, looking to score the basketball. Three point shots of plenty here. And a whistle before the three point attempt. A three in the key. No, an offensive foul. A little bit of a movement there on the screen. So Floyd will inbound to filler. And now Floyd has it. Yep, they're going to have to hedge better off the ball screen here, get a hand in the face of Floyd. Otherwise, he's going to stay hot. Demetrius Floyd goes in, dishes off. Eight to shoot. Filler. That wow. three is good. Wow. Deep. Adonis Filler. 24, 25 feet out to beat the shot clock. And that shot is good by, I believe it was Chuck Smith. May have been Armstead, either way. Oh, no, Armstead, high. you are correct. It was a nice high arcer, soft off the high window. And filler again. Unbelievable to start. Florida Atlantic well represented here by Adonis Filler, the six foot four guard, who along with Demetrius Floyd have really shouldered the offense early on for point streak. I think they've scored all 13 points combined. They have. They've built their largest lead here of six points and a chance for one more. So Adonis Filler, six four, 200 pounds. Florida Atlantic Owls had the pleasure of having him on their team. Back come Canada, try and answer with something of their own. Shot is good for Andre Jackson. Let's see if somebody not named Filler can hit the shot. Not so, but offensive rebound back out. And up and in, the lay-in. 
and the foul for Tevin Glass. Yeah, Glass able to stick with it, despite a bunch of bodies surrounding him underneath the rim. Kept the basketball high, absorbed the contact, and kissed it in and off the window. Another good player with good size, 6'8", 220 out of East Tennessee State. Glass completes the three-point play. So, early point streak is taking it to the Canada Stars here. It'll stay with the Stars. And look at this defense, although left a man wide open there. And who else but Filler for the rebound? They're doing a little bit of everything right now. Filler will drive inside himself and lay it up and in. And there is no stopping Adonis Filler. Uh, he's doing it outside, he's doing it inside, he's doing it on the glass, he's doing it off the dribble. All of a sudden, a 10 point lead up on the scoreboard. Point streak with no answer. Excuse me, Canada Stars, but they do get a bucket there, so 19 to 11. This is Ishmala Kalilu, his first basket. 6'8 forward out of Malloy College. I was going to say, if Filler hits that, just start the bus. <laughs> yeah, I think he bit off a little bit more than he could chew on that one. Ill-advised deep three. When we get a moment, we're going to send it over to our sideline reporter, Todd Bernacki, as the rebound taken. Lay in. Nope. And back come Canada Stars. Fifteen to shoot. CJ Bussey had it. Gets it again. Three point shot. Air ball. And it will go back to point streak. And right now we're gonna send it over to Todd. Todd, what do you have for us? Thanks, guys. Hey, some good news already reported from the Global Basketball Summer League. The star center at six foot ten, Brian Bridgeforth for this point streak team is on the bench today with his teammates, but he won't see any action because why? Well, there was some good success from him earlier today. He went to a private tryout with a couple of teams from Asia, Southeast Asia, one from China, one from Japan. Both liked him highly. They're very impressed with his skill set. He already has a contract with the team from Japan. The other one from China is in the works. Good to have choices, especially from the Orient. Some great news out of this event for the big man and Brian Bridgeforth. Back to you. Thanks, Todd. And here we have a foul as as Malcolm Lemons will go to the line. 6-4-2-10 out of Tokyo. Played for the Tokyo Reeves. Six point, 16 points a game, five rebounds and one and a half assists. So filling up the stat sheet for Lemons. Can't hit the free throw though. Offense a little inconsistent, <coughs> excuse me, for Canada early on in the ball game. Big part of that, Matt, has been the defensive energy, as you pointed out, a point streak. They've stringed together a few pretty good possessions of forcing some challenge shots and cleaning up the defensive glass, perhaps first and foremost. One out of two for Lemons. So Wally Hepburn, as I mentioned in the open, want to watch for him, but right now it's filler with most of the points. Hepburn gets it, drives in, layup, no good, but a foul, he'll get himself to the line. No, they call a travel, I think. No, it was an offensive foul. So Canada will get it back. Chance to take a bite out of this lead. Ten on the shot clock. Stars gonna make something happen. They can't do it. Air ball, but air balls go to the offensive player. Out of bounds. And with five, it'll stay 
with the Canada Stars. Yeah, that one an air ball that was challenged. Ball never hit the rim, so it doesn't reset. Inbound to Chuck Smith. Smith for three, no good. Rebound taken. And back on point streak. Three point shot, no good, rebounded. And up the floor for Tay Palmy. Smith passes it over, but his teammate can't get it to go. And again, I think what's happening with Canada is they're going a little bit too fast. They're only down by seven, they just need to slow it down. Yeah, I agree. Playing a little bit out of rhythm right now as a result. Wally Hepburn, his second shot won't go. And again, Canada with a chance, but almost a turnover, which then results almost in a layup, but they somehow get it back. New 24, and they'll reset. Yeah, that was a nice pass by Abdullah to set up what should have been a layup. Abdullah, no. Abdullah gets it to go. 6-1, 180 out of North Carolina. Second chance opportunities. That will be a big stat on the stat sheet. Hepburn yeah. passes. And Canada with a chance to go with back-to-back -back buckets, but a steal. Nice move. And we have a foul on It was on uh, Brian Bridgeforth. One of the things about this Global Basketball Summer League is we tell, we'll take a timeout. These players are drafted the day before the game starts, and then this is session B. So a lot of these players we're used to seeing on one team will be on another team in this session. Right. Yeah, there's a few holdovers from the first session, session A, and Chuck Smith being one of them as we look up and down the roster, Cullen Russo and other, both on the Canada Stars squad. But you're right, just when you think you know the guys or start to know them, they flip the script on us about midway through and guys get reassigned, guys who are starters may come off the bench on a different team, not to mention the fact all the new players uh, get thrown into the mix as well, so. And as broadcasters, people take it for granted that everybody just knows the names. Right. It's a little bit tough. Right, they think we're computers sometimes. Huh? They also, what would be helpful, and I I don't think we'll get this anytime soon, is names on the back of the jerseys. That would be nice. You yeah, know, I mean, it would help us for sure. It would be almost no almost no need for a, for a roster at that <laughs> point. Yeah. You know, baseball announcers say, uh, I've talked to many MLB announcers, they say the worst day in baseball from a broadcaster standpoint, Jackie Robinson Day. Everybody wears 42. Right, right. You have no idea who anybody is. Right, real tough. So in keeping with that tradition, number three has the ball. <laughs> Just kidding. Pivot back out and stolen. A nice steal there by Abdullah. He'll go up to lay it up and in Abdullah coast to coast. That's actually Cullen Russo of Fresno State what? showing the size and speed for a big man at six foot nine. Oh, you know what? There's uh, tape on the back yeah, of the jersey. A piece of tape. That's, yeah. that's what that was. Yeah, the, the jersey is actually number eight, but the tape made it look like two. Eight, right, made it look like two. And so now Abdullah has the ball. Right. Good extra pass by Russo. Yeah, there are two number eights for the Canada Stars, but one has tape. So, yes, it was. It was Colin Russo, you are correct, out of Fresno State. Now he actually, Matt, hurt his ankle on the first day of the tournament back on Friday during session A and has seen his minutes limited as a result because he's not 100%. But we saw in that steal, that coast-to-coast -coast layup, that, that he's getting healthier for sure and is certainly playing well despite the ailment. Martez Lewis has 
possession with 50 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Point streak leads by three. Five to shoot. Got to make something happen. Shot, no good. Follow, no good. And back with it are the Stars. Excuse me. And hit by Demetrius, or excuse me, Chuck Smith. 170 out of six, six foot 170 out of Howard University. And Martez Lewis drives inside, blocked. What a block. And back comes Abdullah. Abdullah with seven, with six, with five, and three. He'll lay it up and out, but a foul is called. With two seconds remaining, tied at 21. So Abdullah will go to the line with a chance to put the Canada Stars up by two. And Ten, considering, no? yeah, and considering where they started, this would be a momentum builder for them going into the second quarter, being up after being down. Yeah, trailing most of the quarter. Abdullah has played solidly himself as he nails the second. That's it. Long shot, almost banked in, but not quite by Wally Hepburn. And that will do it. Well, again, I, th I think you called it right, Matt, from the top of the show that this first quarter, at least, was going to kind of serve as a feeling out process. I think we've seen that as both teams have come out. They've run their offense, but they haven't tried to overdo it. And we've seen slowly but surely the pace of the first quarter kind of quicken. And I think now in this second quarter, all bets are off, so to speak. I think it'll continue to be high-flying action. And Canada Stars made a lot of adjustments. And for more on those adjustments, let's go to Todd. Todd, what do you have? Guys, the Canada Stars had a rough start to today, but boy, Mike Leslie really has circled the wagons for this team. You really have to be impressed with the way that they've turned up the dial. They've really found their, their mojo, and they've really turned things around. In effort, the energy wasn't there. Point streak came shooting out of the gate, making sure everything was working well. And then on the other side, the Canada Stars were a little flat-footed. And Mike Leslie, in the previous timeout, just before the end of this quarter, said, look, guys, we got to help each other defensively, and I want more communication. Well, you certainly heard the level, the vocal level of communication rise for the Stars. And all of a sudden, they go into the second quarter with a two-point lead. We'll see if they can continue. Continue that momentum. Back to you. Thanks, Todd. And yeah, Canada Stars definitely made some adjustments going into the second half of the first quarter, and we'll see what they can do here in the second to pad their lead. Yeah, big thing, as Todd said, is energy. You know, a lot of this comes down to intensity, particularly on the defensive end, on the glass. Can guys really maintain their focus through 40 minutes and play at the max level that their bodies will allow them to that's called high energy sometimes referred to as nba energy and seemingly canada after a slow start as you said began to pick it up over the last five or six minutes and hopefully for their sake they'll continue in quarter number two well everybody wants to make the nba so they're going to need that nba energy as exactly. you just mentioned we'll start in the second quarter here 23-21 in favor of the Canada Stars. Shot is no good. And a loose ball foul. We're going the other way. It will be point streak possession. So momentary delay here. This has been really fun here at the Doolittle Convention uh, Community Center, rather, in Las Vegas. And uh, it's nice to, for me, I'm from California. It's nice to enjoy the sunshine. A little bit too hot, though. Well, you get all the sunshine all year round, don't you? 
California? Well, yeah, but I mean, no. we do actually have some points where we're in the double digits of, you know, temperature. <laughs> right. Like that would be that would be nice. Like normal areas. Yeah, it's been 100 plus really, even at night, all week long. And a nice jam, a nice jam by Deshaun Curtis to tie the game up at 23. Nine minutes remaining in the second quarter. Filler comes. They tried to foul him. It didn't work. He passes off to a teammate. Layup good by Devontae Harvey. Or excuse me, by Jason Boswell. Yeah, Boswell out of Florida International. Another holdover from Session A that got a pretty diverse ball game. That good by Andre Jackson. Filler back up with it. Back and forth the fair we have here. A minute and a half gone by. 13 on the clock. Wow. Three pointer is good for Jason Boswell again. Two in a row by Boswell. We saw earlier in the week how he can heat up and heat up quickly. So Boswell saw Donis Filler and said, I want to get on some of that action too. Right. Yeah, it was Filler along with Bridge, uh, excuse me, uh, Floyd, who really held it down early on. Demetrius Floyd and Adonis Filler. Yeah. You know, Jason Boswell getting in on the action. That's their big three right there. Yep. And again, playing in this game without Brian Bridgeforth, who is out with an ailment. Other guys have to step up their games, and those three players have contributed big in this first half. Boswell with it now again. Deflected. Stolen, two on one. Nice. Alley-oop, oh. but unable to convert. And back to point streak. Spoke too soon there. That would have been nice had it been able to be completed. Felt like the pass was a little low there. That was Andre Jackson on the pass. And Filler will go to work. Goes up, lays it up and out, but Filler will get to the line. And no pun intended, but he's been filling the stat sheet. Yes, he has. Yeah, he got to work early looking for his shot, hit a couple of deep threes that kind of wowed the crowd a little bit. And now being a little more aggressive, trying to take the ball to the basket, trying to drive off the dribble, draws the contact and has a chance to add to his point total here at the free throw line. I'm gonna call it in the early going as Filler misses a free throw, of course broadcasters jinx, but I would say that Filler has been the player of the game thus far. Yeah, he certainly looked like it. Hits the second. So point streak leads the Canada Stars 29 to 25. Canada Stars looking to respond. Up and under and in for Ishmael Kalilu. We've called his name before. Yep, another Session A player. He's got a nice all-around game. Filler. What, what does he want to do? Passes off. Layup up and in. Good for Chuck Osborne. C.J. Bussey brought it up. And now a little bit of trouble with it and a foul. It was Devontae Harvey that had the ball. Yeah, may have gotten bailed out there with a whistle. Not the smartest of passes there by Harvey trying to rifle it into a crowd. Luckily, there was a grabbing call to retain the possession. Tries the crossover. Won't work and a steal. And that's steal by Kalilu. And foul to prevent the two on one break. As Chuck Osborne was all ready to either slam it down or pass it to a teammate that wanted to do the same. I think he's got to get rid of it earlier, right? I mean, he took an extra two dribbles 
and allowed the defender to close the gap and commit the foul. They had numbers, they had two on one. You gotta get rid of the basketball. Filler. With 14 on the shot clock, he'll go. His shot is good, Adonis Filler. Wow. He just won't quit. And he's doing it in a variety of ways. That time the step back fade away. We've seen him go to the hole. We've seen him spot up for three. I mean, he's got a wide variety of ways to score the basketball. He's the reason why point streak has a six point lead. And again, Filler with a slam dunk. And Adonis Filler has just taken this Global Basketball Summer League hostage. <laughs> and said, this is my game, everybody else get out of the way as well, we will have a timeout. Somewhere in the Sunshine State, his buddies over at Florida Atlantic are smiling. He's can, representing the team very well. Can I take this guy to the casino to go play some blackjack? He seems to be hitting <laughs> everything. Yeah, his, his, uh, his good luck maybe rubs off on us. Yeah, he's been outstanding here and, you know, showing the Showing the knack on defense too, jumping into the passing lanes like you saw there. He's had two steals in this first half. High IQ, very athletic, and very polished on both ends of the floor. He's got his guys looking good. Their largest lead up on the board, 35-27. This is game number four of four today. We'll have the championship four session be tomorrow. And is that another noon start? It. I, b I believe it is. The championship for session A, which was played on Sunday, was played at noon. And it looks like, yes, we're 12 slated 10. for 12-10 tomorrow for the championship game, which will feature, of course, one of these two teams. Taking on Greek Connect. So 5.58 here remaining in the first half. And the Canada Stars need an answer from somebody. CJ Bussey with it now. That shot is good for Devontae Harvey. Starting to get going himself. Yep. Uh, we mentioned earlier the Greek Connect team won their semifinal matchup in the winner's bracket. So Coach Gabrielle's squad is sitting comfortable waiting for the winner of this one. A nice layup by Ishmael Kalilu. Yeah, Kalilu looking to be more aggressive. His game up until now has basically been perimeter oriented, but a nice drive to the cup there. Filler with the rebound. He'll push up the floor. A million miles an hour, passes it off, and a layup is good by Aaron Armstead. Well, Filler, we know he can score, but how about leading the break? Splits the double team at midcourt, and then unselfishly comes up with an assist on the three-on-one. He's got points, he's got assists, he's got rebounds, a dunce, Filler. He's got game. He's got game. Oh, that's an offensive foul, yep. Offensive foul. That's Ellis. on Kevin Glass. Excuse me, that's not Oliver Ellison. Yeah, Ellison a little too aggressive there. The Moroccan pro crashed his 6'10 frame into two defenders there. Can't dip the shoulder that blatantly. All right, I'm going to try and brave this name here. Athletic Club Benizien from Morocco. That, I'm a, that's the best I can do. That's close enough, I think. That's I'm not even going to try it. No, see? <laughs> Folks, in this business, you got to be bold like that. Right. you got to try things. Right. Ten on the shot clock. I'm, I'm glad you were the, the brave one. <laughs> Ooh. And. That one was borderline. Yep, yeah. they're going to give it to him. Yep, yeah, that one. Just a little too big, I think, for his, his own good on that one. He bumped into the smaller guard and sent him flying. Yeah, Abdullah took a shot. Abdullah will get it now. Colin hands it off. Colin tries to get the rebound, but it bounces over the backboard. So point streak starting to assert their will here 
against the Canada Stars. Up 39-29 with 4.06 remaining in the second quarter. Yeah, I think this is a big stretch here, Matt, going into the halftime break. You want your guys to, well, if, if you're losing, you want to trim the gap, but if you're winning, you want to maintain the momentum. I think this is a make or break part of the game for both teams. That three is no good. Cohen taps it out, and back comes Canada Stars. And just too fast. Yeah. I think he waited too long. Again, an extra dribble. He had a little bit of a lane there with Russo to his left to fire a bounce pass early, but the longer you hang on to the ball, the less, the less interesting those options become, the less viable. Mark Brown was the culprit with the turnover. And Filler. Wow. <laughs> This wow. is just silly. A I mean, ton of filler. We're talking full speed with the dribble, spin move in the lane, and then just a little teardrop to make it count. Pretty, pretty. Colin, layup good. Yeah, they need to get him going, I think. You know, Russo playing, as we mentioned, on, on a little bit of a bum ankle, but when he's on top of his game, he can be a huge difference maker. Filler distributes. And defender couldn't quite hold on. Now they say it was deflected. So point streak will have it back. Inbound pass. Eight to shoot. Filler, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I was going to say if that went in. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good shot, though. In any event, foul called, and Deshaun Curtis will get to the line. Yeah, Curtis, another pro overseas, played in Slovakia his last time out. And again, a guy with some good size at the wing spot at 6'7", 220. He's been kind of quiet so far in this first half, but he has the potential, I think, to be a difference maker the rest of the way. We have 304 remaining, and point streak is already at 42 points, and this is 10-minute quarters, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've seen a lot of points scored throughout the tournament. We saw a few games, a few teams, rather, from Session A finish out games with over 100 points on the board, including the Session A championship game where Finnish Select scored 112 points. Chuck Smith unable to get it, but right there to clean it up, is Mark Brown, 6'5", 190, out of the Austin Knights NBA L League. Yeah, they gotta start stringing together some stops though. I mean, Canada's been able to score the ball in the second quarter after a slow start, but. And there's an offensive foul as Colin took the charge. Yeah, that's one way to get it going as Russo just stepped right in, drew the contact. They got a string, they're gonna have to string a couple of stops together like that if they want to close this gap in the final 235 of this first half. Cohen Russo, Bulldog. Eight points, six rebounds, one assist. Yeah, we talked earlier about Brian Bridgeforth, the 6'10 forward for point streak, and how he's not gonna play in this one, but that doesn't mean he can't be influential to his teammates. During this time out, as his guys were coming over to the bench, he was very talkative, very demonstrative, trying to get his input, uh, make his input stick and, and contribute some way. If he can't be out on the floor, he certainly wants to stay active with the game plan. And, and I think that's important. You know, coaches are looking, again, not just at production, not just at statistics, not just what you're doing on the floor, but what kind of a player you are, what kind of a teammate you are, what kind of a pro you are, and I think that's a good opportunity for Bridgeforth, even though he's not active, to catch the eye of the scouts. So we await the resumption of play and global basketball televised in over, the NBA Finals were televised in over 200 countries. So yep, ratings were up too. I can't imagine why. Oh, it must have, <laughs> must have something to do with that Kevin Durant guy going to that team that nobody's ever heard of. Right. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to be Golden State Cleveland for the next decade, right? I mean, sign me up. <laughs> I was there, Game Five, June twelfth. Were you? I was. Nice. We're a traveling violation, and we're going to head over to Todd. Todd, what do you have for us? Well, guys, you know, Ricky Cleveland George is awfully impressed, I think, with his point streak team and their play today, especially his guards. And, you know, you really can't blame him. And led by Adonis Filer, who's filling up the cup with 15 first half points. Boy, he's electric off the dribble. And defensively, he really likes the way his team is communicating, helping defensively, and collapsing down on a lot of the Canada stars and making them take shots off balance and shots they really don't want to take. Right now, that formula is working extremely well. They're flying high flying through and taking advantage of that and they have a 12 point lead here as we approach halftime. Stay with us at halftime. Daryl Reshaw will be our guest. He's coming up next. Back to you. Thanks Todd. Tevin Gloss with that last layup. And point streak. Couldn't quite keep possession there but it's been fun here at the uh, Global Basketball Summer League. These games are sanctioned by the NBA. This is the first or I should say the official training program for NBA officials. George Tolliver spoke to us at the hotel as we have a fast break. Kalilu lays it up and in, nice. and he tumbles to the ground. And that was Deshaun Curtis actually oh. getting a rare bucket. And up and in by Chuck Smith. And you're right on that one, Deshaun Curtis with the acrobatic layup. Three-pointer, no good. Rebound, up and in for Tevin Glass again. 6'8", 220 out of East Tennessee State. Meanwhile, Russo slow to get up there. And again, that's something to watch. We talked about it with that ankle. He's going to retie the left sneaker here appears to be okay but anytime 6'9 6'10 goes flying to the floor folks hold their breath for a minute so chuck smith will bring it up here 49 35 in favor of point street canada will try and get something going here before the half as abdullah gets it over now 10 to shoot Shot is good for Aaron Armstead. And a long pass unable to be collected by Glass and back to Canada. So they can possibly trim it to single digits here before halftime. Abdullah, he'll get it over. Armstead, Russo, back to Smith. Armstead goes up, nope, and a foul. No, travel. Travel, yeah, he seemed to drag his pivot foot there. So 20.9 remaining. Point streak, we'll try and see what they can do is. Yeah, this would be a fantastic end of the half for them if they can score here. Martez Lewis with Armstead on him. Lewis. Good pass. And an easy, easy dunk for Deshaun Curtis. At five, Smith. At three, at two, at one, his three-pointer, no good at the buzzer. And at the half, the point streak team leads Canada Stars by a score of 51 to 37. Stay tuned, we will have Todd with Daryl Reshaw, the CEO of Global Basketball, momentarily. And Nick, what did you think of the first half? Well, after a back and forth first quarter, which you accurately predicted and described as a feeling out process, we saw Point Streak really take control in that second quarter as they got guys going up and down the roster, but 
the one that stands out is Adonis Filler. I mean, he had a couple of highlight type plays in that second quarter. And he made it on the defensive end as well. He was a difference maker with two steals. So I'm interested to see what the stat sheet looks like and what kind of a game stat-wise Filler has been putting together. But if you're Team Canada, you got to find out what's going on uh, on defense because to allow 51 points in just 20 minutes, that is not going to cut it with a, with a trip to the championship game on the line. Well, Todd doesn't have Daryl Risha, but he does have Brian Bridgeworth. Todd, what do you have? All right, we're here. We're joined by one of the big men playing in the Global Basketball Summer League and Brian Bridgeforth, who had some good news actually earlier today. I know, Brian, that uh, you weren't with your teammates with Point Streak, but you were part of a private workout with an agency. How did that go? Uh, yeah, it was a private workout with uh, Top Notch, so shout out to everybody at Top Notch. I appreciate you having me. Um, the workout was pretty well. Uh, it had a lot of summer league guys in it, a lot of overseas guys, and a lot of rookies like myself. Uh, I played very well, got offered from a team in Japan, and let's see where it goes from there. Well, you're wearing a big, broad smile after today. What were their impressions? What did they say to you about your level of play? Uh, they love my motor. They love my uh, activity around the room. They like how I can run and jump, and they just and they like how the way I scored the ball as well. They felt like. I, they felt like I was already a pro, but once they found out that I was a rookie, that was even more impressive to them. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. Were you nervous at all going before a private workout like that, or you just relax and worry about your game? Um, I was more ready to play and stuff because this is about like my third or fourth combat, so like all the nervous jitters they gone now. Yeah. What are your impressions of this event this week and the guys that you're going up against every day? Um, global, it's been a great experience. I played in session A, had a great session A. Continuing in session B, I wish I could be out there with the guys, but they they doing it right now, so they don't even need me right now. I'm just here for support. But global basketball has been a great event. I love it. Well, will you be with Point Streak tomorrow? Will you strap it up? I definitely will be with Point Streak tomorrow. Very cool. Well, congratulations, buddy. We look forward to you playing on the next level. Thanks and good luck. Thank you, too. All right, guys, good news. Brian Bridgeforth perhaps signing a contract. We may see him overseas next year. Back to you for the second half. Thanks, Todd. Well, Brian Bridgeforth, unable to play, but able to give a great interview to Todd. And He's supporters. on his way to Japan, we just found out. Signed a deal earlier this afternoon. Congratulations. So congratulations to him. Wow. And that just goes to show you, global basketball is really global. I mean, if, you, yeah. if you're here, somebody will find you. Right. We have some updated stat lines for you. And uh, no surprise, Adonis Filler. 17 points, wow. one assist, two steals. I mean, in How about seven of nine from the floor? Too. Seven of nine. And two of three from the free throw line in 13 minutes. That is the most impressive thing right there. Yeah. 13 minutes. He's got 17 points. Yeah, and 33%. He's done it, he's of, done it yeah. in a variety of ways, right? I mean, we talked about it. He was seemingly a three point shooter to begin the game, and then he started to. Go to the hole with the dribble drive and then in transition off the steal. Uh, found his guys for a couple of assists as well. I mean, he had a nice complete first half and he's on pace right now for 34, which would be impressive. In 10 minute quarters, you betcha. Yeah. yeah. So six guys in double figure. Aaron Armstead, Ishmael Kalulu, Oliver Ellison. They all have 11 points. That's an odd stat line. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Really? Yeah. No, 11 minutes. There you go, Matt. First broadcasting on the <laughs> broadcast today. 11 minutes. All right. I, I, I thought that was weird. I really did. Yeah, never believe what you see in print, right? Until you check it out. No, no. And uh, Aaron Armstead, though, was impressive in that first half, leading the squad with nine points. Demetrius Floyd with that last bucket for point streak. Back comes Canada Stars. And uh, Devontae Harvey will get to the line. 6'3", 205 out of play for Clark, Atlanta. Yeah, and that's a nice job on the offensive glass there on the weak side. Went and out-rebounded two bigger opponents down there to, to wrestle it away. And that's a generous 6'3", I think, by the way, um, which is all the more impressive that he was able to haul in that rebound. A stat that I am that I am uh, confident about is, well, I was, I was gonna say 
total rebounds, you know, 10 to nine. I mean, so you would think. Things would be more even on the scoreboard. Yeah, and oh, up and in, and the foul for Tevin Glass. Yeah, Glass has played well here and there, right? I mean, we've looked up and he's made a difference usually around the rim. Played pretty well in that first half, three of five from the field, seven points. How about this stat though? This is the king of them all. 68% for point streak from the floor in that first half and 13 of 16 from the floor in the second quarter. That is just outstanding. A blocking foul up and in and Abdullah will get to the line to try and trim this lead somewhat. Yeah, Abdullah was a guy who kind of shouldered the offense early on for the Canada Stars and then went kind of quiet in that second quarter. I think they need him to be a little bit more aggressive with the basketball in this second half. Meanwhile, they're, getting, they're in danger right now, Matt, of getting blown out. I mean, they're down now 18, a minute into the third quarter. They have to have a response. There's they do? Way. Yep. As Devontae Harvey. Harvey gets a shot to go. And oddly enough, one person who we haven't seen too much of is Wally Hepburn. And Abdullah. And oh, what a block. I'm going to call a foul, though, I think. Still, what a block by Osborne. They yeah, got a lot of basketball there right at the rim. Time to jump well. But a little bit of body, according to the officials. And Obunce at the line with a couple. Or excuse me, excuse me. That's Ellison. Isn't it? Ellison. Obunce with the foul. Right. There you go. It's been a long day here it at the has. Global Basketball Summer League. It really <laughs> has. I mean, what's our average? How, how, how many hours do we broadcast basketball in a row? Oh, boy, I don't know. Nine? For today, yeah, probably about. But you times that by, what, seven days we've been here. 63 hours? Yeah. No, Wally Hepburn. No rest for the wicked. No rest for the wicked. Ten on the shot clock. And Obunce couldn't cash that one in. Ellison with the rebound, back out. Nice spin move. And. Nice. And a nice find. And a layup, no. The ball rims out. Beautiful and backdoor pass though. That's one of the better passes we've seen. Three pointer is good for Devontae Harvey. Or excuse me, for Jason Boswell. Yeah, he's got a pretty J and range as well. That, that's a two-pointer, they say. Now a steal by Hepburn. And all alone for the dunk is Martez Lewis. And just like that, point streak is up by 21 points. Score of 61 to 40. And it's gotten away from the Canada Storm, Nick. Yep, you're right about that. Biggest lead of the ball game here at 21 points, just two and a half minutes into this third quarter. And boy, point streak, they are playing at 100 miles an hour. They really are. Up and down the floor, they're getting after it. They're jumping passing lanes. They're aggressive on the backboard on both ends, led by Adonis Filler. He's had help, though, as we've seen throughout the game in the first quarter. Demetrius Floyd really set the tone, looking to score the basketball from the Point guard spot. Tevin Glass on occasion has been good in the paint, as has Deshaun Curtis. But the constant has been Adonis Filler, who has just really separated himself and, and has led the attack. But it has been a team effort. Canada, meanwhile, they gotta find a way to, to respond here. Somehow, some way. Looks like they're gonna bring Russo back into the game. That may be a start to try and solidify the middle, but uh, They've looked sloppy at times. 
they have settled for forced outside shots at times and overall just haven't been consistent on either end of the floor. They got to figure something out and something quick before this one really gets out of hand. Nick Anastas, the optimist, saying, <laughs> that, saying that this hasn't gotten really out of hand yet. <laughs> I'm not called an optimist very often, I'll take it. 24 point lead, 21 point lead, nah, that's not out of hand. No, they're not, good, they're not, good. Not quite. Point streak though, they're not gonna play around either. I mean, no. they're, they're not gonna be satisfied until they're up 40 here with the full court press. Abdullah. Smothering defense. Eight to shoot, wow. Smothering defense. Look at this. Look at this, Abdullah has to do something. One to shoot, they do get a three off, no good. Look at the bench, fired up. That's a, that's a defensive position. I mean, I right don't know there. how anybody even gets a shot out there. They're, they're lucky that it even hit the rim. That was one of the best defensive series of the tournament. Lay it up and in. Great position. For Tevin Glass. Glass doing what he wants inside. He backed him all the way down to the rim there before even catching the ball. Three-point shot is good. Maybe that will be the only reprieve for Andre Jackson and the Canada Stars. Yeah, they needed that one just to quiet the other team. It's a timely bucket. 20-point lead. And turnover, Canada Stars back with it. They do get it across. Russo kicks it over to Abdullah. No good. And back comes. Hepburn. That's a travel. That is a travel. They don't call it. Nope. But to no avail anyway as Canada Stars come back with it. And up and in for Andre Jackson again. So 18 point lead. And I think for Canada Stars, if you're able to get this to 14 or 13 by the start of the quarter, you'd yeah. Yeah, you take it. Yep. They're down 14 at half. There you go, Abdullah with a nice steal. He's only got Hepburn to beat, and he does. Abdullah with the lay-in, and all of a sudden, Canada Stars are within 16. Now it looks like Coach George going to bring a couple of subs, including Filler, back on the floor in response. That is not... A good shot there by Armstead. And here comes the Donuts filler, and I think I just heard a big gulp on the bench of <laughs> the Canada Stars as they do not want to see him come back in the game. No. 17 points. Yeah, another guy who's pretty long is Deshaun Seven Curtis. Seven for nine from the field. Yeah. yeah. And Deshaun Curtis, good in his own right. That's just under 80%, the by the way. Yeah, 78%, right? right? Something like that. Yeah. We're broadcasters, not mathematicians. It's close, though. Hey, but the fact that we were able to figure that out right on the fly. <laughs> and, and a nice tip in. No, yes. A tip in is good. I believe that was Malcolm Lemons. Suddenly a 14-point game, Matt. We talked Suddenly about it. Suddenly a 14-point game. They were down 23 just two minutes ago. Filler, see if he can continue his hot shooting or if being on the bench cooled him off a little bit. Filler drives in, Hepburn three, no, rebound. I didn't touch the ball, I didn't touch the ball. Well, it's gonna stay, I think, Well, with point streak here. Our apologies, we almost just got run over, so. But yeah. yes. Yeah, you get out of the way when a combined 500 pounds is coming towards you. You want to sit courtside, this is the price you pay. Smothering defense on filler, but able to get it over for a three, which is no good. Rebound taken by CJ Bussey. And after all that, a chance to cut further into the lead. A 
a nice layup attempt. And Colin Russo will head to the line to close the deficit even further. Yeah, they've scored eight unanswered here and have upped the intensity, I think, on the defensive end. The fact that Russo is back in the game, I think, is a factor as he's been a rim protector defensively and a guy who's looked to attack on the offensive end. Not to mention the fact he's a factor on both ends of the floor on the glass. So I don't think it's a coincidence that the run has commenced when Russo has been on the floor for the Stars. No, absolutely not. He's got to cash in here, though, he does. Well, Canada may get your wish, Matt, that they cut the lead inside of 14 now. Can they get it to single digits before the quarter ends is the new challenge. Fuller. And I believe that's out of bounds, but it will stay here with point streak. Coach Filler with a word with Coach George. Coach George, he's been very busy during this tournament. He was an assistant yesterday with Daryl Armstrong, made a guest appearance on the sideline. And of course he had his own guys to coach in the Session A tournament. And scouting for you. Filler just bowled over Bussy. And then a, a steal by Glass, but not right. a fast break as right. Canada Star is able to get back. 15 point lead to Point Street. Nice pass. And again, up and in, Glass and Bussy will bring it back up and they have to shut off the faucet on the other end if they help to do anything. And on cue a steal and a nice dribble Behind the back to lay it up and in yep, for Sean Curtis, and they will get a timeout. Yep. There's Coach George fired up. He's breathed some life back into his guys. They saw their lead cut from 23 down to 13, and they pushed it right back up to 19 here with a mini 6-0 run over the last 45 or so seconds. And that's what they can do. They can score in bunches. We saw it in the first half when they put up over 50. Doing this really without the help of Adonis Filler. He was the catalyst from the first half, but we haven't said his name much so far in this third quarter. That speaks to the depth of the point streak squad. And of course, they're without Brian Bridgeforth, who's perhaps their best frontline player. That's the unbelievable thing. Well. And right now we are gonna go to Todd for an update. What's up, Todd? Well, guys, sometimes the best laid plans don't always work out as designed. And head coach Ricky Cleveland George of Point Streak in his previous time and said, hey, guys, let's continue to work together. At that point, they had a 21 point lead. He wanted to build it to 28. He says, let's push this up by seven more points and do it by playing a unit. Well, they started to get a little sloppy. Credit Canada stars they came back they put on the pressure and they forced some mistakes by point streak they cut this inside 20 but all of a sudden this point streak team has found their second wind they're playing extremely well together as a cohesive unit their chemistry really looks good they have a lot of energy and even their bench has a lot of energy and it's working well they're up to a 19 point lead remember if this holds they'll play for the championship early tomorrow here in Las Vegas good news for Ricky George Cleveland and this point streak team back to you Thanks, Todd. Excellent reporting by our own Todd Bonnecke here at the Global Basketball Summer League. C.J. Bussey with it, trying to mount some more momentum as Russo passes it inside, stolen by Filler. Wow. Oh, and a nice pass, and it was just too fancy of a pass for Glass, and it's picked up. Good hustle. Point streak again, and they'll get the foul. Foul is going to go against Harvey and nope. Jason Boswell will shoot a pair. You can tell these guys 
know what time it is, right? They're all over they the floor. They want to get to that championship, because that's what time it is. They do. They want to play for a championship collectively and individually. They want to hopefully generate a professional deal out of this little tournament here in Las Vegas. Guys giving 110%. They'll ice down tonight in the shower. They'll look at their elbows. They'll see a couple of scuff marks, a couple of red patches, but it'll be all worth it in the end if they're successful. 71 to 50 in favor of point streak. That shot rims in for Ishmael Kalilu. Filler kind of shoves Bussy off him. Now on Russo, drives over against both of them. Now Glass throws it out of bounds as he thought a teammate was there, but not so. Aaron Armstead will check in. Played for the Northern Illinois Huskies. Yeah, that's the other thing I found, Matt, interesting is that throughout the rosters here on the Global Basketball Summer League of both Session A and Session B, there's a lot of schools, not just from Division I, not just high majors, not mid-majors, but we've seen D2 teams, D3 schools represented. You throw in the fact that you've got pros in both the D League and overseas. Pretty diverse mix, I think. Well, Malcolm Lemons, who played in Tokyo, is going to get a shot at two free throws here. Speaking of Tokyo, Japan, we mentioned earlier Brian Bridgeforth signing a deal with a league in Japan just this afternoon. And he arrived, I think, late to this one, not going to play, but is good to go tomorrow for point streak in what looks like, at this point anyway, is going to be the championship game at 12 noon. And we were in a seminar the other night with uh, Daryl Rishaw and Jay Humphreys, and he was talking about what it's like to have a player, a young guy that's never been overseas before, try and go overseas and not only play, but assimilate to that culture. Right, right, that's probably the harder task of the two. Right now, the harder task is gaining possession as Canada Stars, the beneficiary of the call. Now, that is something that I can't even imagine. I What's mean, that, living in Japan? Well assimilating to a new culture where you don't speak the language. I mean, they, they don't ask broadcasters that speak English to go learn Japanese right. like it doesn't work like that. Right. Yeah, I, I would have a hard time for sure. Russo goes in, can't get the and one, but he will get to the line. We've got an extra layer of security here, it looks like, on press row. Keeping us safe here, courtside. Somebody get a camera, this is intimidating. <laughs> it is distracting, I will say that. <laughs> not distracting for Russo. Again, he's played well, despite the fact he's not 100%. Bad luck being injured on the first day. Tweaked his ankle, didn't sprain it. Was healthy enough to continue to play on Friday. Sometimes that's worse. Because yeah, it you, hangs can, around. you can tweak it and then it when, when you sprain it, you're able to fully heal. But when you tweak it, you have to play on it, which can then aggravate it. Right. But hopefully that won't happen. It hasn't yet for Russo. Filler is human. Well, is Maybe not. Steal, yeah. <laughs> and another assist. And another assist. An easy assist for Deshaun Curtis, the beneficiary from Adonis Filler. And Russo able to jam it home. So a 17 point advantage for point streak. And it's not over. Nope. Still holding on to the 10 minute quarter in front of us. But they need to need significantly stop chip it in. Yeah, a stop here would go a long way. And they do get that stop. And they got 10 seconds to work with. And there's a foul. And it's bonus time, too. That's team foul number 11. So Russo, a chance to trim the deficit. 
possibly down to 15 if he can hit both here, and they don't take any time off the clock to do so. Meanwhile, Filler having an intimate discussion here with his backcourt teammate, Martez Lewis. And that's the thing that's sometimes overlooked, Matt. I mean, we've mentioned it plenty of times, but again, these guys are getting to know each other in real time here, trying to figure out each other's games, where they are on the floor, and talking it up with one another during a dead ball is a good way to accelerate that process. Russo hits them both, and what would complete the momentum shift, I believe, or at least go a long way towards it, is the stop here. Yep. And they'll give an extra foul here on the floor. That's a good foul. Yeah, and that's not a shooting foul despite Filler's attempts at convincing the official of the ladder. Yep. Filler gets it back. His shot at the buzzer almost banks in. Wow. And you know what? With his performance today, we would not be surprised. <laughs> exactly. So your score, apparently the previous score was incorrect. So it's actually a 14-point deficit for the Canada Stars at, at the uh, quarter break here. 14-point deficit for... The Canada Stars and my, myself, Matt Fowler, alongside Nick Anastas. And Nick, it's nice to be here with you in Vegas. And uh, it's nice to be here at the Doolittle Community Center. And what do you think going into the fourth quarter the Canada Stars need to do to pull this comeback off? Well, they came close a couple of times, trailed by as many as 23, chopped that lead down to 12, and here they are down 14 with 10 minutes to go. What have they been doing? Well. They've moved the basketball. They've made that extra pass, and that has allowed their offensive flow to kind of kick into gear. Defensively, they got to clean up, I think, the glass, number one. Can't give up second-chance opportunities, glass. which we've seen. My next point was, right, try and contain Tevin Glass inside, and then if you can force Filler to get rid of the basketball and not look to score as much, I think those are ingredients defensively. But the overall, I think, big thing is don't quit, keep the energy level up, and play the entire 10 minutes out here. Absolutely, and something about this is the filler. We saw him explode in the first quarter, but he hasn't done much since. So, I mean, he's, he's hit some shots, he's had some assists, but he hasn't had that explosiveness that we've seen. Yeah, I think that may be the key for point streak. Run the offense through the Florida Atlantic Star and filler and, and let the other guys be complementary pieces around. Uh, Keep playing hard. We saw a lot of bodies on the floor there. We've seen the 110% effort so far in this ball game. Keep that going. The 14-point lead should take care of itself. We're going to get back to the action here at Doolittle Community Center. And who else but Filler starts the fourth quarter. Ten to shoot. Good defense here. It ends up in a lay-in for Deshaun Curtis. And Filler with the defensive rebound, and it just seems like the Canada Stars are one and done each time down the floor. Yeah, and that's a tribute to the point streak effort no, on the glass. No, Filler just stop it. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> A uh, little hang around shot there, elevates, and then the scooper off the window. How long did he hang in the air? It was a while. He's done that a few times. He's shown that leaper ability. And we're supposed to be, as basketball fans, optimistic as basketball broadcasters, neutral. But we're going to do a little bit of both and say that for the sake of point streak, they're probably going to win this game considering Adonis Fuller has just decided that they're going to win this game. Yeah, he's been unstoppable. Again, 17 in the first half. He's just added to that total in the second. That's a pretty finish. Nice layup up and in by Malcolm Lemons. We've called his name a few times out of Tokyo. Yep. The Japan game has translated well here to America in the Global Basketball Summer League.
Three-point shot is Dang. good for Tay Pomley. Pretty three from Pomley. We haven't said his name much, but he's got a great release. Russo, his shot is good. Yeah, he's got a great all-around game. He's smooth. He hasn't had the chance to really step back and show his perimeter skills, but he did there. Abdullah with the steal, dribbling through defenders. And Ishmael Kalilu will get to the line. Well, again, tenacious on defense. They come up with the theft at midcourt. Had numbers on the break, and Kalilu goes right to the hole looking for contact. That's the key, the key ingredients. We talked about the energy, the so-called NBA energy. You want to fight till the end, even if you're trailing by double digits. And that's the challenge, that's the task here in quarter number four for Canada is to keep fighting, and good things should happen as a result. And so far, so good. They've cut the lead down to 15 with a chance for one more. My partner, Nick Anast, is channeling the great Marv Albert. Tenacious defense. <laughs> I like it. Well, there's only one and only Marv Albert. So The great one. That's right. I was able to actually say hi to him at a Warriors game. Where are you? Uh, a few months ago. Gave me some broadcasting advice. Really? That was more important than the actual game. Yeah. Of course, oh, yeah. they were playing the New York Knicks that night, so the game was never really in question. <laughs> well, any advice you can get from Marv Albert. You take that all the way to the bank, as far as I'm concerned. And we have what looks like an injury, an injury to oh. Deshaun Curtis, and that does not look good. He's yeah. on the ground, and he's struggling to get up. Yeah, knock on wood. Let's hope he's going to be okay. But He seems to be talking, and... It looks like a lower back injury. He kind, he kind of landed, well, first of all, he did land hard, but he also landed a little awkwardly as well as his body yeah. kind of twisted up under him. And now he's actually smiling, so. He good, good thing the trainer is on hand here. And again, knock on wood, we haven't had many serious injuries. We mentioned Cullen Russo's ankle, but that didn't stop him from participating. And we've had a few other bumps and bruises along the way, but by and large, everyone so far has been able to stay healthy and Hopefully that's the case here. That's where we'll, the wet spot being attended to. Well, I just found out that it's, it's Adonis Filer, Matt, not Filler, so shame on us. F-I-L-E-R, so it is Filer. Filer. But who has been filling up the stat sheet, as you said correctly. Filer has been filling up the stat sheet. I want credit when I said that he was filling up the stat sheet. Oh, I said that's that. all you. I said that first. Filer. You said that in the first quarter. Goes to the basket, and I want to make the – Filer is going to get two free throws. Filer will go to the line. You can file that one away. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh, boy, he's had a game to remember, though. He's We're gonna, having fun in Vegas. He's going to want a copy of this broadcast. We want to make sure we get his name right. like those shoes, by the way, flashy. We're having fun in Vegas, contrary to what you may or may not believe. We have not been drinking. Right. Not yet, anyway. That will not be the case in about two hours. <laughs> well, he's smooth, though. I mean, again, flawless on the release, beautiful form, athletic, quick, smart. If he doesn't land a gig as a result of this game alone, I'd be very surprised. Oh. Somebody will grab him up and has a, some piles of money to offer him, I'm sure. Yep. Four to shoot. They've got to realize it. Now they do. And back comes Filer. Good pass. And Tevin Glass almost able to get it up and in, but could not do it. And remember, he just went down with that apparent injury, but he seems all right there. That's another part of Filer's game, his ability to lead the transition fast break. He doesn't wait too long. He doesn't take the extra dribble. He gets it. He assesses in a split second, and he gets rid of the basketball. As he see, finds Glass, and Glass finds his way to the free throw line.
Glass gets the first, and we are two minutes and 40 seconds into the fourth quarter, and Point Streak has 83 points in a game that features 10-minute quarters. <laughs> yeah, they may hit the century mark. I don't want to make anything about the broadcasters, but I did the broadcasting for San Francisco State at the college level, and they had a similar average. They averaged 80 points a game for the whole season. And wow. so when, when, when you average 80 points a game in a 40 minute game, that, that's yeah. saying something. And I'm seeing a lot of similarities. Of course, most of these players played either professionally or in college, so they understand. But still, just the simple math of it is we have a blocking foul here and Glass will go to the line. The simple math of it is 84 points in less than 40 minutes, 34 to be exact. You don't yeah. see it. Yeah, they're, I mean, again, they're. I mean, that's NBA level. They missed three shots in the second quarter. I mean, that'll do it. They go, <laughs> they go 80 percent, 81 percent in the second quarter. That's after going over 50 percent in the first. I'm interested to see what the percentages are in this second half. They may not be that high, but they've been impressive. I mean, you have to shoot a high percentage, as you said, to jack up the point total that much. And there's still seven minutes to go here. I, I think they look pretty good to break the century mark. Yeah. yeah. If they don't, I'd be surprised. Meanwhile, what, what was that? A wet spot there. Yeah, get the towel out. Good to go now. Filer. With eight to shoot. It's it over. Glass. Nice cut. And, but unable to finish. And Russo dribble it up the floor, stolen. Filer up ahead, and missed the slam, no! Boswell, missed time to jump there. Boswell couldn't do it. Good pass. On, on the other end, up and in for Wally Hepburn. Excuse me, Malcolm Lemons. Malcolm Lemons. Good cross the lane pass to set up Lemons. Unselfish play there. Canada Stars refusing to go away. And we saw it in a few previous games. Didn't result in the full comeback, but if you can get it under 10, those points go quick. Yeah. Yeah, again, it's a testament, I think, to, to the Canada Stars for not quitting. There was a bunch of different points during this game where it looked like they were about to get blown out and sent home, but they are not going to quit until that final horn sounds and it's apparent here. Again, looking to trim into this 17 point lead. Malcolm Lemons, unable to complete the three point play. And it's a foul against point streak. So another possession for Canada Stars. Coach George being a little upset on the Fort Street sidelines, wanting an over the back call. You see why he's upset, I saw that too. Yeah, he doesn't complain too often either. He, he kind of picks his spots and that's when you know that maybe the officials did make a mistake when he's up at near mid court arguing the call or lack thereof. And a foul as Demetrius Floyd had it. And Chuck Smith, excuse me, Demetrius Floyd committed the foul on Chuck Smith. Chuck Smith out of Howard University. That's the good old Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, the MEAC. I spent some time in that league a few years ago. There's a few players from MEAC schools out here in Vegas putting in work. And a steal and a foul. And it's a foul on the Canada Stars. So the ball will go back to point streak. And we're going to go to Todd Bernacki right now. Todd, what's up? Filer 
unable to hit the three, and back come the Canada Stars and Malcolm Lemons, and he is tripped up. Good athletic rebound by Lemons. So Canada Stars will be able to have another possession, see if they can cut into this lead, make it a little bit interesting with six minutes remaining in the ball game. And game number four of the Global Basketball Summer League. Global basketball has been absolutely phenomenal with everything they've done for us. And now that we're at a timeout, we're going to go to Todd. Todd, what's up? Hey guys, how about Point Streak? Back to a 17 point lead, six minutes away from playing for the championship here tomorrow afternoon against a very feisty, defensive minded Greek Connect bunch and Linos Gabriel. And hey, how can you not be impressed with the coaching prowess of Ricky Cleveland George? He's got this team really playing well together. They've got great chemistry, and boy, I think they really believe and like each other as well. One quick injury update Deshaun Curtis, you remember, took that spill in the front court in the lane. He landed right on his right hip. The training crew has wrapped him up. He's done for the rest of today, but he does have a good smile on his face. Remember, this is Summer League. He'll be all right. He should be ready for that championship tomorrow afternoon. And we'll look forward to he and Brian Bridgeforth, who remember sat down today. He'll be back in the lineup as well. It should be a formidable opponent for Greek Connect. Back to you. Thanks, Todd. Todd Bonnecke, our great reporter here at Global Basketball, working the sidelines for us. 5.59 remaining. And Canada Stars will have possession. And what's your takeaway from this game thus far? Well, Nick? I'll tell you this, point streak's good. I mean, they're doing this without Bridgeforth, without now uh, a, a guy who went down earlier with the injury in, in Hepburn, and you know, they're, they're just gonna be tough to stop tomorrow afternoon. Again, they, they face Greek Connect at 12 noon. That should be a tremendous ball game, but they've got size, speed, and good decision makers handling the basketball. I would consider them the favorite going in. Although this one not quite done yet. Shot no good, rebound. Canada Stars, second chance opportunity is good. Not quite done yet, Matt. 15 point game, Andre five Jackson. and a half minutes. Seven to shoot. Four to shoot. Got to make something out of nothing. At one, they're not going to get a shot off. Shot clock violation, and all of a sudden, down by 15, there's a little bit of momentum in the favor of the Canada Stars. Yeah, down only 15 here. Again, an opportunity to capitalize and make the most of it. Got to take it trip by trip. That's got to be the mentality. Coach George just told his guy during the brief timeout, hey guys, keep an eye on the shot clock here. Know the situation that's part of closing out opponents. And looking at Russo, can't get the three to go. And a rebound and the Canada Stars unable to cash in there. And three pointer is able to be cashed in there by Boswell. Jason Boswell, yeah. So he's got a smooth shot, doesn't Jason he, Jason Boswell, and a three in response is an air ball. And yeah, picked up there. by CJ, uh, by Martez Lewis, rather. I go right back to Boswell here. Set a screen on him on the weak side. Get him facing the rim. Let him shoot that pretty looking J. Eight to shoot, seven to shoot. Glass. That's an air ball, that is not his game. Oh, I was about to say that exact phrase, not his game. He had Boswell, I thought, on the weak side. One more pass might have freed him up. You know that, he's gonna come out of the game here. But Glass has played well. I, I bet you he's, he's up there near a double-double. Solid game up front for Coach George. Good first step there. Yeah. Point streak with possession and they have done more than enough to win this game. Blocking fouls called. Question is, will they hit 100? 
Looked like it was a sure thing a few minutes nope, ago. But they're not been, I don't think they're going to do it. They've been stuck in the 80s now for the last two or three minutes, but as long as they get the victory, I'm sure they're not going to care. They heard what we said, and I don't know. Wanted to prove us wrong. Huh? They can do that when they have an 18-point lead. All <laughs> right. Ten to shoot. Winding it down here, three and a half remaining. Yeah, Blocking be foul. A there, yeah. yeah. Blocking foul on Ishmael Kalilu. That's number six. You can get ten fouls in the Global Basketball Summer League and the NBA Summer League. We still have not seen anyone foul out yet. Right? Actually, that has happened. It did? It, I, I believe it happened yesterday. I didn't see that. Nice reverse layup. Nice reverse layup by Aaron Armstead. I mean, you got to be looking to foul out, to foul out, I would think. Well, especially, your, especially with 10 guys on the roster. Your coach is going to have a conversation with you, and it's going to go something like, you had 10 fouls. Right. You used all of them. Especially with 10, 11 guys on the roster, as we've seen in session B. It's tough to do. Point streak. Can't get it to go. That's a shot clock violation. The ball never hit the rim. So we'll have a timeout here with 2.48 remaining in the game. And Nick, this has been fun. And it's been fun with, uh, with everybody we have here and, you know, meeting everybody at the hotel and, yeah. and here. And, and I understand you went over to watch the NBA Summer League game last I night. I did. I did. I watched the Warriors. And what happened there? I didn't see. Uh, it was a different result than the finals this year. Let's put it that <laughs> way. Um, I'm sure you're okay with that, though. You know, right? I, I, I am more than okay with that. Warriors are 0-2 uh, in the Summer League, but, you know, maybe they'll get back on track soon. Um, what, were the, what were some of the highlights, you think? I, I just like to see Jordan Bell. Yeah. Um, there was a few flashy assists. Patrick McCaw played well. Okay. Uh, 70... What about for Cleveland? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know any of the players on their summer league roster. I can tell you all what their starting five is. Uh, I can tell you what their starting five is, and then I can tell you what the effective starters are. Okay. So I can tell you the starting five, and then I can say the effective starters are LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. That's it. <laughs> wow. No, you're, a, you're a tough critic, my friend. Uh, well. You're a tough critic. Well, they, what? May, they may not have been as good as Cleveland or as Golden State this year, but. Cleveland's still a good team. Cleveland is a good team, but there's no way they get anywhere near the finals without Kyrie Irving or LeBron James. Yeah, I agree with that. And it, and if one player is going to make the difference on your team, I don't think that makes you a good team, if one whole player makes a difference. Because if Steph Curry goes down, Kevin Durant's still there. Right. Kevin Durant goes down, Steph Curry's still there. Or Thompson. I think Thompson's just in that mix, too. You know... When Michael Jordan retired, the Bulls went from 57 wins to 55 the next year. Well, they also lost Pippen and Rodman and their coach. And they still won 55 games. <laughs> that's a good point. But, yeah, that's that's my point. Did they really win 55? Yeah. The, year after? the year after Jordan retired, they won 55 games. No, that, that can't be right. You know, that is, that is right. I'll tell you why it's not right. Because the strike, or excuse me, the lockout occurred the year after. No, no, no. The first year that Jordan retired. Oh, 94. 94. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I believe that. They won 55 there, sure. They almost beat the Knicks in the Eastern Semis that year without Jordan. They lost in seven. I'll tell you, though. I'll, I'll tell you, though. I think that the Warrior, Golden State Warriors the, or the, of this year are the greatest team of all time because. No way. No, 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 no. Because. No way. I don't care what you're going to say. I'm going to tell you you're wrong. What, what, what uh, 96 Bulls? Yes, absolutely. No. I, saw, I, was, I was old enough to see them play, brother. They, they, got went, they, would, they would shut them down. A Utah team took Jordan to six. A Utah team with two hall, first ballot Hall of Famers absolutely took them to six. Okay, so what did the Warriors do this year? They, they, won, they won the title. Well, no, but I mean, like, but, 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 but they. They're not better than 96 Bulls, though. I don't care. Again, whatever you say. Uh, but all the records say that they are. What, the wins They've, and losses? No, the, the we, that too, but anyway. <laughs> we're bantering a little bit here. We Back are. to the game. You can tell it's a blowout. Meanwhile, point streak's been stuck on 87 for the last 
three or four minutes, right? I mean, this one. Yeah, this is actually. The, the clock is their best friend right now. They just want to get the win and get out of here. And we talked about, we knew Canada was not going to lay down and go away, and they haven't. Fortunately, it looks like they're still going to run out of time, though. Yeah. Three-pointer no good by Armstead. Rebound and 90 seconds. Remaining in the game here, game four. We apologize for getting a little bit off track there. We have a steal. It's all right, it was entertaining. It was entertaining. And a bucket by Andre Jackson. We've called his name a few times tonight. And a foul on, on Bussy, right? Bussy, yeah, CJ Bussy, 6'2", 185 out of Indiana Tech. When, when, when was the last time you heard Indiana Tech? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever A heard professional player out of Indiana Tech, that is impressive. Meanwhile, Coach George, one who asked for the timeout here. He's not happy with the way his guys have, have played here in this fourth quarter, it's evident. He's been upset here over the last several minutes and now. And look at the score. I mean, we, we're, we're, at, we're at 87 to 76 and, you know, points rig is still going to win this game, but it's going to. Well, they've only scored four points in six minutes. So I think a lot if of these guys. If this was the third quarter, they'd be really worried. Right, exactly. A lot of these guys, I think, took for granted when they were up 20 plus that, that it was over. And, and that's not the way it works. It's not the way it works. Yeah in college or the pros. I mean, you have to play no matter what the score is, no matter if you're leading big or trailing big, you gotta close out the ball game and, and keep that killer mentality. And that's what these scouts are looking for. It's part of what separates pros from amateurs. And I'm sure that's part of the message that Coach George was reveal, uh, was saying there in the huddle. So 111 remaining. And you know, unless Reggie Miller's on uh, the Canada Stars. I don't think that there's going to be a comeback here. No, but you, you never, never you never know. You never know. Theoretically, you could have four possessions in a minute from a theoretical standpoint. So you need three pointers. You need them in a hurry. And Good defense. that starts with getting a shot off. But you got to get the ball back first as Filer. Filer dribbles around, and there's the exclamation point for the victory. Yeah, I think that'll do it. That will do it. Spectacular game by Filer. Spectacular game. Bussy lays it up and out. Filer with the rebound. Filer, he'll run it. He'll use clock, and deservingly so. Yeah, I don't think we'll see a foul here. Looks like we'll speak with Coach George and Adonis Filer. Todd will, coming up immediately after the game. Todd's lucky. He's done a great job. He has. One on the shot clock, they won't get a shot off, and that's about the only thing that they've done wrong this game. There will be 18 remaining, and we'll probably have one more shot from the Canada Stars before Points Rick runs this out. That three-pointer is good by Armstead. Went deep. So, if you can believe it, the final score of this game is going to be... 10 points. 10 points. Yep, credit Canada. I was impressed there in the fourth. They didn't lay down at all. Well, no, it's not going to be 10 points. Is That's going to count. And, and that's, that's... Boswell. He that, had a great yeah. game, too. And he just told the <laughs> official score, count the basket. He wants to make sure he gets credit for that one. <laughs> it's Okay, it's a two-pointer. So your final score at the buzzer, 91-79 in favor of Point Streak. And Point Streak just a little bit too much for the Canada Stars to handle. Yeah, they controlled the game really from the first quarter on. And... and Again, had contributions up and down the roster. Adonis Filer was the standout, though, for sure. Had 17 points in the first half alone, but he had plenty of help, whether it was from Bosworth, whether it was uh, Boswell, whether it was uh, Glass. Okay, Deshaun Curtis, another guy who contributed. They did all this without the help of Brian Bridgeforth, who was busy earlier with a private workout, which resulted in a professional offer 
in Japan, but we understand Bridgeforth will be back. We heard it from him, uh, him himself at halftime. He'll be back tomorrow, and this squad goes up against Greek Connect, and of course we'll have coverage of that Session B championship game here of the Global Basketball Summer League on Global Basketball TV. And we are standing by now for Coach George, waiting for Coach George and Mr. Filer to speak with our own Todd Benaki. So another successful day in the books here, day two of Session B, and we're looking forward to a nice finale tomorrow, the final day of both Session B and of the Global Basketball Summer League event. And I'm sure I'm sure Adonis Filer has a lot of well-wishers that are talking to him right now, so yeah. it's gonna be a minute. Well, it looks like Coach George, at least, is just about ready, and I think Coach George is trying to track down Filer for us. Yep, there he goes, so we'll get to hear from both head coach and star player with Todd. All right, Todd Bonnecke, take it away with Mr. Filer. Todd, what do you have for us? Big game today for Point Streak. They move on to the championship tomorrow, and one of the difference makers was the birthday boy today. And Adonis, uh, first of all, is always a story behind a name like Adonis. So your mom must have thought oh. you were a Greek god when you were born, right? <laughs> I hope that's the case. <laughs> do you know uh, the theory behind your name? Well, uh, I think my mama, my mom and my daddy both agreed agreed upon it, and uh, my dad's name was my granddad's name was Don. So. I just went on ahead with Adonis. Very cool. What's it like celebrating your birthday? You had a lot of energy out there today. Uh, it feels really good. It's always good to get a win on my birthday. I haven't played on my birthday probably since AAU days. So it uh, feels good to get a, a good win on my birthday, especially playing well. What about this team and the way that they're playing together? You really, I thought, had some good chemistry today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, you know, we, we had that since yesterday. And uh, it seems like everybody's on the same page. We come out with defensive intensity, and then um, everything else just takes care of itself. They what are your What are your goals here in global basketball this week, and how do you feel you're achieving those? Uh, well, my personal goal is to is to obviously get a contract, uh, find a new home for next season. Um, you know, a uh, team goal. We want to win the championship. We want to win all our games. It looks good on everyone, everyone's resume to to win this championship. Everybody on this team win. Should be a good chance that they get a chance to uh, make some money next season. Well, how about Las Vegas? You enjoying it so far? I know you played ball down at Florida Atlantic. Boca Raton's different heat than what we have here in Las Vegas, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't had a good chance to to experience uh, Las Vegas yet. Um, but uh, you know, it is it is really hot. It is really hot. No doubt. So you have plans in Vegas so for your birthday tonight, a little celebration? Uh, I celebrate tomorrow at the championship game. Uh, that's a great attitude. Congratulations, Adonis. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Here with Coach Ricky Cleveland George. And Coach George, one of the reasons why you're playing for the championship, the play of Adonis Filer and the rest of your team. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, them guys definitely playing good together, great chemistry. Yeah, the biggest thing is, they're not communicating out there with their mouths, but they're communicating with their bodies. You know, they made some great plays just communicating off each other's body and not not talking. And usually you don't see that with guys that are new together this early, this quick. They did it since yesterday. So that's been a great thing, the great energy that all of them bring together. How were you able to win today without Brian Bridgeforth? That's a big athletic body not in there for you. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, a guy like that is a definitely 10 to, 10 to 15 more points that you're missing. So in terms of come out of here with a 10-plus win, you know, it, it speaks on the volume of how the guys picked up in areas that he usually is there. It really speaks volume on the behalf of the players with their IQ play and their level of intensity. Ricky, I know he had a great workout earlier today and maybe is on his way to playing professional ball. That's got to be rewarding for you and the rest of this summer league. Oh, yes, most definitely. Um, a lot of guys, you know, that's the biggest thing is they come here to get a job and not help the next man get a job. I explained that to him well yesterday. 
if you come here, you get the job, or you're going to help the next player get the job, man. Right now, I think they took heave to it. They soaked it in, and right now they're playing to make sure each other get a job and not the opposing guys on the opposite team. All right, one more game to play, and that's against a very sound, defensive-minded Greek Connect. You're going against a legend in Coach uh, Gabrielle. What do you have to do well tomorrow? Just good, straight execution. Again, guys got to play at a high volume, good, high IQ, not low IQ. Okay, Continue okay. to stick together, and it all works itself out at the end of the day. When we go in the huddle, it's like them guys come out and they execute it right off the grip. They keep the intensity up. I mean, each time we kind of let down, we got in the timeout, them guys came back on them and pressed it. So, again, it just speaks volumes for the guys and the hunger that they have to get a pro contract. All right, well, 24-year-old energy tomorrow, maybe in a championship game. Good luck, guys. Thanks again. Thank you. All right, Adonis Feiler and Ricky Cleveland George, our guests today, playing for the title tomorrow, guys. Back to you. Well, happy birthday to Adonis Feiler. As it's his birthday and he just goes off, what can you say? You know, happy birthday, Adonis Feiler. I like the answer. He says, no celebration tonight. We celebrate tomorrow after the championship. That's a professional answer right there. There you go. That's forward thinking. This game was absolutely phenomenal. And Point Streak will take on Greek Connect tomorrow at 12-10 for the championship. A session B to wrap up this year's edition of the Global Basketball Summer League. I am Matt Fowler alongside me, Nick Anastas, and Todd Bonnecke. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we will see you tomorrow for the final day of the Global Basketball Summer League here in Las Vegas, Nevada.